where we're trending right now is in a really bad direction. And Bitcoin is going to fix, as we say, you know, Bitcoin fixes this. But and, and that, you know, and I I believe that, you know, 100 percent. And so I just had to get involved in this from an education standpoint, helping people. And that's what I do at Bitcoin 101. Mike, we, yes. finally, we finally got you in the studio. I'm, I'm glad to find somebody who has an even more generic name than, than mine. I think, <laughs> I think Mike Smith beats out Mike Peterson. So. It does. Um, yeah, stoked to, to have you here and share with everybody all the different things you've got going on both here and back in Michigan. And, but introduce yourself, let people know kind of who you are, and, and then we'll get into your Bitcoin store. Yeah, as you said, my name's Mike Smith. I'm a contractor. Uh, that's my background. That's where I come from. Like, so I'm an excavating contractor. Okay. So we do site work. We do. I built a lot of subdivisions. Built so you're some, doing most of the dirt work. Before. Doing the dirt work. Okay. Yes. Doing dirt work. Um, doing uh, site work for commercial buildings, schools, hospitals, whatever, you know. So I got into uh, developing a little bit. I would use my ability to uh, build the project to get equity in a project. And we did a number of uh, subdivisions. In, in Michigan? In Michigan. Only in Michigan. Yep. Going into 08, 09. So the last one I did was in 2007. 08, 09 came. Everything collapsed, you know. And everything changed really fast, especially for me. So, were you on the hook? You were in the middle of some big projects. That, I was that in you the, were backing, and I was in the middle of some big projects. And you know, I had partners on all of them. On a couple of them, I had one partner, but on the biggest one, I had five partners. Extra messy. Yeah, it was. It it, it, it kind of worked to our advantage because on the big one because we had cut a deal with the, with the bank where we were only one sixth personally guaranteed. So the bank had kind of a mess trying to come after anybody. And, you know, we were able to negotiate a deal. Um, and I, I ended up with it. Not that I was the strongest one, but, uh, I was able to, everybody, uh, I gave them a chance to get out. You know, they all put money in, took that, I put some in, but we took the bank out and we got it behind us. Did that on a couple other ones. So that process, so on, on one of them, I, you know, I got a really good inside look at how this all really works. And I had a banker at the biggest, he was on the, on the biggest one, but he was on another separate deal. And we didn't have a lot of debt on that. And he came to me and he's like, you know, Mike, we're going to we're going to work with you on this and we're going to renew your your line here on this. And we're going to we're going to gut this out. We're all going to get through this. And but you got to pledge some more collateral because I had some other property that adjoined it that was free and clear. Mm -hmm. And you got to put that property in. You got to. And I tied up a couple other things. And I came in, we signed the deal. I get a call like the next day from the higher ups in Grand Rapids. Like, you're not working with uh, Phil anymore and we're not gonna renew you. When your line comes up, we want you to move this to another bank. And I'm like, I'm sure you do. You got one in mind? Cause like nobody's loaning money on real estate deals, right? So, they, I had a really good relationship with this banker, and I, and I still do actually. Yeah. He's a really good guy, and it was kind of out of his hands. They, well, they used him. Yeah, they they knew we had a good relationship, and they, 
you know, and then they just pulled the rug out from underneath me and him. I, I, I know that he did not know they were just going to pull it away and say, get more collateral pledged. That'll give us more to auction off, basically, if they can't come up with the money and pay us off. And uh, that was really, you know, you got trust in your banker through many years, almost like your doctor, your accountant, you know, they're your professional. And when you just get, you know, tomahawked from behind and it, it, you know, it was like, it was a big impact. It made me completely rethink how I was looking at everything. I was looking at the financial system. Um, I also was looking at the value destruction that occurred in that time period. Like we were in, in this development I'm talking about, we did another one next door and they, they were selling those lots for $50,000. I ended up buying all those lots for $5,000, you know, and I saw lots going for one, two, three thousand $3,000, you know, at that time, not unusual. Anybody got had, if you had cash, you know, cash was king. I mean, they just were not issuing any credit. You find out what things are worth without credit and it's not, what they were with credit <laughs> anywhere near. And, and, you know, you're not getting, and you know, that was in place for, it never went back, like opened up to the amount of credit they would give you to do developments, even recently. And now that's, it's all tightening back up. So we're kind of, you know, I'm seeing a lot of what I saw in 08, 09 right now. Were you able to, to pull that deal together or did you, I, did you I, lose it? I was, okay. I, I, I was able to salvage all the deals, okay. you know, and, uh, and just wind them down and, and sell them off, you know, as I actually went and did a couple more phases on the big one. But, uh, but that got you thinking about just the banking system it in, did. in general. It did. And it, 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 it really got me thinking. And, and I remember thinking that when I saw, you know, property go from 50 grand or a hundred grand, maybe a commercial piece of property, you know, 95, 97% drop in, in, in value. You're like, if I'm going to, if I, if that's going to be the standard, you're never going to get financing on a deal. Like there's never going to be, you know, any bank involvement. If you, you're planning your pro, pro forma, your business plan for a 95% drop in your assets, you're never going to do anything. It is never going to work, you know? So, I was like, I got to find out, I got to drill down and like, I wasn't, I wasn't buying the line at the time, which was they loaned too much money to subprime borrowers, you know, and they couldn't pay it back. And that was kind of the, and, and that did happen for sure. But I was like, and I didn't, you know, I didn't have a problem getting my ass kicked either. It's like, okay, you got to regroup. You got to, pull up your bootstraps and, and go on. But I was like, there, there are just more to this and I'm not seeing it. So I spent the next one to two years probably drilling down. That took me to sound money. That, that took me to gold and silver. So I was buying gold and silver. And then of course, you're not, you're not gonna go too far down the sound money path without coming across Bitcoin. So I came across Bitcoin in 2011. It was November of 2011. And it was at about $3. And, and I read there was a hard cap and it had to be mined, but I'm not technical. You know, I'm like, I, I don't, you know, I don't believe, you know, there's no way this is for real, but I was interested in it. I remember thinking at the time, like, if all this is true, which I don't see how it could be, Th this could really be something. So I followed the price action for a long time. I, I watched it go from $3 to, I think it was like 1100, I think it was right before Mount Gox. I'd go to uh, uh, Mount Gox every day to check the price. And I watched it go to 1100, maybe to, you know somewhere in there. And it actually exceeded the price of an ounce of gold. And I was like, 
how can that be? That somebody just made up this digital with just a little bit of electricity, you know? And, and how can it be equal? To, it takes a lot of capital, a lot of work, you know, to get an ounce of gold out of the ground. And that just really, I was like, hmm. And then Mount Gox hits. And, you know, price goes down like $150. And I'm like, there. I, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I didn't get any of that, you know. I, I, I probably, I don't think I got far enough to try to figure out how to get it. I was just too intimidated by it. Yeah. And then when the price dropped, I was like, okay, but I, I, was, I still kept track of it. And I had to go to Bitstamp. It was the only place I could find a price. And I'd go to Bitstamp. I'd check it every day, every day. You know, and I kind of watched it come back. And I saw more and more people in the sound money world were starting to talk about it. They were like, you know, we're putting a 25 or 50 basis point allocation to this asset because it's the most asymmetric trade that we've ever seen. And, you know, 25 or 50 basis points isn't going to kill anybody if it goes to zero, but the upside potential is too big. We got to get some exposure. So more people that I respected started taking a position. They're like, you know, we missed this early, but we're on it now. And, you know, it was two or three of those guys that I was following. And I was like, I have got to drill down on this. So I just started uh, going down the rabbit hole and learning everything that I could about it. And that was in, that was probably through most of 2016 and 17. And then at like $1,800, I started buying Bitcoin. You know, and that was that was the time where it kind of got easier to actually it buy did. it. It did. So, yeah, yep. you didn't have to be a technical person. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so I was able to get in there and do that. And then so that was in early 2017. And were you still running your construction business? Oh, yes. then? Or? Okay. I've done that, you know, for the last 32 or three years. So I started, you know, so I started buying and I, I'm buying, you know, right into this bull run that I have no idea what that is. And, and you know, you're just thinking you're super smart. You're I, the smartest I, guy out there. I like. am the smartest guy out there. I'm like, <laughs> I knew it. This is, you know, and I'm like, and I'm, buy, I'm not buying any gold and silver. I'm just buying Bitcoin. Right. And I bought, you know, into December and I'm like, I'm way up, you know, on, on, even at, at that point in time, I'm thinking, you know, I'm way up. I'm still thinking kind of in fiat terms, right? And of course, peaks December 2017. And then, you know, I mean, it comes down 10 grand really quick, you know. But at that point, I had done enough work on it that I was like looking at this as a really good opportunity. So, I had educated myself enough to know that I don't care if it's going down, long as it's still not long as it's TikTok next block, I'm in, you know? So I I continued to buy the people that I had that I got to buy, you know, that's a tougher deal, right? We all know that. <laughs> I mean, yes, yes. You know, so I kind of I kind of changed my uh uh pitch a little bit in that, you know, I'm like, you know, believe it or not, it's more important that you get an education about Bitcoin before you even get any Bitcoin. I mean, it's super important for you to get it, yeah. but you really need to get educated on it, you know? Yeah. Otherwise they'll, they'll go all in and, and then they'll sell it all when, uh, when it crashes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. and they'll blame you. <laughs> right. Right. You know, unfortunately, I think it's still the case. I, I think, you know, maybe 98, 99% of the people out there their their uh, their work and education on Bitcoin involves watching the price, and, and that's about it, you know. And, and that and I tell people that is a you're going to get wrecked. You you're not going to be able to hang with this asset. You're not going to be able to accumulate. You're not going to be able to hang on to it if all you do is watch a price and you FOMO in here and then you bail on a correction. You're just going to get killed. So you, you got to know what you're buying. You yeah. got to understand it. You know. So so you went, you, you kind of went down the rabbit hole, you started allocating to it. 
And then how did you jump from that to the the Bitcoin 101? So I, uh, I, I, and tell, I, first tell people what Bitcoin 101 is. It's a fascinating story. I've, uh, I love. Yeah. So I, I love the fact that uh, you, you turn the bank around on itself. Well, so. and ironically, the, the bank that I had the biggest battle with on sorting out these development deals is the one I bought. <laughs> so, so, you know. So just to clarify, you didn't buy the bank. You bought the branch. I bought so, the building. Yeah, yeah. I bought the building. Yeah, that was was their bank under the stipulation that I couldn't turn it into another bank, which you know was the last thing I was going to do. But, but, but leading up to that, I made a contact with a really good friend out in L.A. that is a expert on wallets, coin splitting. You know, he helped a lot of people through the years, and and he helped me, and we became really good friends. And he, I would, I would get on, he was in LA or he still is in LA and he has, uh, ATM machines and, and, uh, jukeboxes or whatever, but in bars. So when COVID went through, they shut all the bars down and, you know, he, he all of a sudden is basically put out of business. So he had a lot of time and we would get on, you know, a zoom call and he would just teach me how it all worked, you know, tracing transactions and the mining shot 256, the mempool, all this stuff. And it, and he spent, we spent hours and hours and hours. And we start talking about multi-sig wallets and how that works and what they're for. So I kind of had, I was able to get a background on how it actually works from a high level. And I thought, you know, this would be a great, uh, uh, opportunity for somebody if they wanted to store one key of a multi-sig in one of our safety deposit boxes. So that's where so I saw, got You saw this bank came up for sale. It had this beautiful vault with, what'd you say, 500? Uh, well, remember, it's the second one I second. looked at. The, <laughs> the, the first one, the first bank I tried to buy in my hometown, they wouldn't sell me because I told them what I was going to do with it. And it was crickets from the, I never heard anything back from them. They just would not sell. They wouldn't talk to me. They wouldn't say anything. And then I found the one that the Bitcoin 101 that we ended up uh, buying. And you didn't tell them uh, I did what not. you were going to do with that. I did not. I never lied to them. I, just, <laughs> I told them I was going to store my stuff in it, which I do. <laughs> so. so the idea was to have this place that, that people could secure their, their keys, you know, of a multi-sig. So you're not going to just have one. You know, single key yes, that, right. that, like, that, I, that you know, you're responsible for. You, you would have to be America's dumbest criminal to try to break into that vault because you're going to get absolutely yeah. nothing. You know, I don't hold any value at all of, of, from somebody else's Bitcoin. But they, it's valuable to them. It's only valuable to them. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and this was still, you're still running your construction business and I, you um, decide to to branch out and just do this. I'm assuming it was more for the participating in the ecosystem it is, than, it is. than a business. I, you, you know, know. I, I came to understand that Bitcoin was, you know, the only chance that I saw for my kids and my grandkids, like where we're trending right now is in a really bad direction. And Bitcoin is going to fix, as we say, you know, Bitcoin fixes this, but, and, and that, you know, and I, I believe that, you know, 100 percent. And so I just had to get involved in this from an education standpoint, helping people. And that's what I do at Bitcoin 101. I'll bring people up there, a group of people up there and give them a little, you know, show them, show them how it works, answer any questions. But I do all this for, you know, nothing. I've never charged anybody anything for helping them. Well, I think I overheard the other night when we were having dinner that that you also helped uh, bootstrap Mempool. Was that? I, well, on our first donation to on them our or, first, or our first meetup. No, I okay. didn't. So, so that was just uh, our first meetup. Meetup. Okay. I was or not our first conference, uh -huh. our annual. I, we were donating all the entry fees. OK, that's what it was. Yeah. To Mempool okay. that space. And and then they made a deal with GitHub or something right before our our comp before we had our retreat, and so we ended up. I ended up sending it here. 
last okay. year. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, Mempool dropped off. By that time, I had, I saw the Bitcoin Beach story, you know, and, and I just loved it. And it made it, it made it easy. So that's what I did. So what year was it that you bought this? This 2019. Here? Okay. 2019. Bitcoin was at like uh, $3,500 maybe. It was towards the end of 2019. Okay. Because I remember thinking when they wouldn't sell me the other bank, I'm like, I just buy Bitcoin with this, which, you know, and it was at $3,500, you know, but I was like, ah, I got to do this. I you got to yeah, tell them what the poster says there mm. next to that. I mean, that vault is, I, I love that. that is yeah. So that's, the, you know, that's Henry Ford. And he said, if the American people understood how the banking system really worked, there would be riots by morning. And uh, it's a great quote. And he's, and he's right. You know, people don't understand that when they put, hundred thousand dollars in their savings account that the bank turns right around and ships mo almost all of it out you know and that's what he's talking yeah. about that's how the fractional reserve banking system works so 2019 you start this up and then where did the the lake satoshi thing come from like what was the how did the jump get made and so i think i don't know what came first if it was um bitcoin beach north or Lake Satoshi, they're kind of at the same time, you know, but when I saw what you were doing down here. Are they one and the same? Are those both the they, same thing? They are. Okay. Okay. So, the, so, so Bitcoin Beach North is a beach on Lake Satoshi. It is. It's okay. where our totem pole like is that. That, that we'll see here. But yes. So I, we did Bitcoin Beach North and Lake Satoshi and, and we got them both on uh, Google Maps. So so, so you, flip, flip back to that one uh, there, Andy. So this was... So this is actually your quarry for it part is. of your you can see the your uh, construction business. You can see some processing equipment right uh -huh. there. Yep, I love it, and it's beautiful now. I mean, it's, it is. Uh, I mean, what an amazing lake that it, that just kind of was the product. It wasn't we, even wasn't even what you were trying to accomplish. It was so. no. I dug, we we dug that whole thing. You know, there was almost no water there when I bought the property. That's amazing. Yeah. So the idea came to have this kind of gathering of Bitcoiners in in your land and just camp yeah. and boat and fish yep. and enjoy yep. the... Yeah. And when was the first? First one was in uh, August, 2022. Okay. And then of course we had the one this year in August and then... Yeah, I was bummed to have missed that yeah. one. Yeah. My, my daughter, I had to take my daughter to, to school. Obviously that was a priority her first get, year of university. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a tough time. But but I uh, I heard you guys had just an amazing time. We did. It was such a good time. It was a good, uh, it was a great weekend. We had people come bring, uh, one guy come with a pontoon and uh, like a wave runner that locks into the back of the pontoon and that's how you move the pontoon around oh, really? you anchor your pontoon and take <laughs> and the wave runner the, and I ride around and they they were out there uh boating all weekend in that we of course we had a pig roast and we had i mean everybody that so people brought rvs tents yes the kind of the whole nine yards they did we had this yep. uh, and we modern had, day Bitcoin Woodstock out there. We had food for everybody all weekend. Nobody had to leave if you didn't want to leave. You know, everything was right there. And then, of course, Saturday was the conference day all day. But it was, was it like a conference conference or it was more just we, a we actually, fun get together? We actually what? had, I think we had four, four or five panels. Okay. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, but it was we, mostly we, a time to just gather yeah, with Bitcoiners. It was. And, and it was. It was. In this beautiful place there. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I'm definitely going to be there next year. Yeah. And I think you guys only charged people. It was like twenty one dollars in Bitcoin. Was that? the? Yeah. Well, yep. They could uh, send us Bitcoin or they could pay us. We would take like the first year we were making them pay in Bitcoin. But I. I don't want to exclude anybody, you know. So I think there was people that didn't come because they didn't know how to pay in Bitcoin. Uh, we would have okay. helped them, yeah, you know, yeah. but I don't I don't want their I don't want anybody to not come if they couldn't afford it or they couldn't pay in Bitcoin, but you know, that so yeah, it was twenty one dollars. Well, and then you guys just donated a, a we, large chunk to, to us we to did. Bitcoin Beach from that. So yeah. thank you. We also gave everybody that. a shirt. So, yeah, yeah, I have mine. Yeah. Yeah. You can't can't miss you when you're wearing that. Right. 
Right. So is the the idea of this, is this going to be something that's every year that, it is. that goes on and on? It's going to be every year. Yep. I have a feeling you're going to be busting at the seams uh, yeah, pretty you know, quickly here. It was, uh, it was a lot of work to do. And uh, PF and Ben, you know, those two guys put an amazing amount of time into it. And, and uh, PF, you know, who's going to be here. But well, he was supposed to be here. He was we, supposed to be here. We, we told him we we're going to badmouth him on air because he didn't show up, but he had, he had a valid excuse. He, so. he really, he put together like the moving it to a conference level with some speakers and some booths and vendors and people showing, you know, we had somebody uh, with some miners there, you know, set up and, and, and I mean, it, it is a lot of work and it'll probably be, more work next year. Probably going to have to get him some well, more. Or what? Help. What do you think you're going to cap out at as far as numbers? Because I, I have a feeling, <laughs> I especially come I, next bull cycle, that's, you're uh, we talked. You're we going to have to put some limits on that. We were talking about that on on Sunday. You know how how are you going to deal with the next bull run? That's going to bring you know a lot more people out, and we can handle. I think we can probably do uh, 500 without making too many changes from what we already got but yeah i mean at some point i, I can only handle so much and yeah. i don't think there's any other place that we i mean we could move it but i i really wouldn't want to do that i just love the theme and the idea and so everybody that went was i mean this went on and on about how amazing it was yeah so. it was a great time it, and you know you got you know, we're in a, a bear market right so you get, you know, you get your hardcore Bitcoiners like us, yeah. you know, so that that's really nice. You know, and the, and the bull run's going to bring, you know, a lot of a lot of fiat chasers out there. And, you know, that that but it is what it is. That's how we build the build the numbers up, you know. So so I think you need to work on that island, turning it into a Bitcoin. We, uh, we be there. I so. I thought I know we we've talked about that, but that that's like a little swamp right there, the bigger area where all the trees are. Uh -huh. So I I don't I can't or I don't really want to do too much with that. Okay. So I, if I would have thought of that like ten years ago, it I probably could that would be really cool, wouldn't that it? That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how far your land goes, but you could just have that be the top part of the bee, and you just go down this. Oh direction yeah, I got you know we got all we got 125 yeah. acres out there, and that's about three quarters of the way back and right in the middle. So okay. we got a lot of room. We got a lot of room. Oh, we, that, and I, the lake's going to be probably about twice as big as it is right now okay. when we're done. So it, well, maybe we can come up. You're going to need it for all the people that are going to show up. So. Right, right. Yeah. So, so how did all this lead to you coming down to El Salvador? And now it sounds like a, a big chunk of your life. And uh, what you're doing is is focused on here. So you know, I'm at uh, well, that's when the announcement was made of Bitcoin uh, 2021 in Miami. But of course, following the story from Jack Mallers, you know, and Peter McCormick came down mm -hmm. here and did a and was doing a bunch of podcasts and and yeah, he did the first one in in I think it was in 19. Uh, he had um, been here before. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was here. He was here very, very early. Yes, when we were literally just a you know group of fifteen people and you know fifteen kids and, and a couple of us you know heading it up. So yeah, so I saw you know I was keeping track of that and I was like, man, that's uh, just it's just I gotta go. I gotta go there. I gotta check this out. So when uh, President Bukele made it legal tender. That at that is announced at the conference in Miami, and I was I was like, man, I don't know much about El Salvador. So I went back to my room that night, got on Google Maps, pulled up the pulled up El Salvador and blew it up. And I literally went from one border, border to border, the entire coast, looking at the whole coast. And there's no real development on the entire coast, no resorts, no all inclusives. And I was like, oh my God, this is Miami 120 years ago is what it's probably gonna be. And I just, you know, this is where you wanna be. You know, this is where the wind is at your back here. 
And you don't have to be as good if you're in the, you know, if you got a good enough wind at your back, you can ride a long ways, right? But the, so this is going to be where, you know, capital's treated the best that, that I see. And of course, you guys see it every day here. Uh, all the activity, all the people coming down here, the property prices, you know, are going up quite a bit. So, and that's all, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. So you saw this as, as this was going to be the hot spot to be. The, I, I did. The, the place that people want to move, they're going to be treated better and... Yeah, part of that. It's yeah, and it's all about Bitcoin. So you know, it was. Uh, I think every time you come down here, you buy another property. I, I know. I got. I got to stop that. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's You're great. worse than me. So, so now we're on both sides of you, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, here at Bitcoin Beach. Yeah. Yeah. So you bought a first a house for mm -hmm. to use, and and that's your Airbnb in that now. Yep. And then you just closed on another place that you're going to Airbnb. Yep. And then you have another property that you're looking to do like a development. Yep. Okay. We're in the design phase right now. So, and, and I'm assuming that, that people will be able to pay for that in Bitcoin. Oh, absolutely. That, yeah. 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 So how far out the, oh, sorry. Before, let, let's finish up on the lake here before we. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Andy's going to be, uh, you know, shooting me dirty looks over there if I don't. Uh, want to see the video? We want to see the video. We got to see okay. the video. So. Okay. Okay. Then, then we'll get into your uh, burgeoning uh, real estate empire. Okay. <laughs> and I think you drug a bunch of your friends in with you, right? That are involved in the different things. Like yeah, I thing. got, yes. Which I got. one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. There is no second best crypto asset. There's a crypto asset. It's called Bitcoin. <laughs> Did you do any of the things where with, with your, you, you see them do where they'll get the tractor and hook a rope to it and swing people around <laughs> into the lake? No, we, we, uh, well, we, hey, jump, we hey, well, OSHA's not going to be listening to this. So <laughs> we have jumped off. I've jumped <laughs> off some equipment out there that makes a good high dive. Uh, no, that's amazing. So. You've got all that going on there, but then also it, it seems like every time you come down here, you take on more more projects. So. Yeah, so I'm getting a good view of how it works down here in, in development. And, you know, it, it's not a lot. The process isn't a lot different from the states. Um, I think that you have a little bit more receptive, you know, group of people in the government here to uh, cooperate with you. Yeah, they want to see infrastructure and development come in, provide jobs. They do, but they, you know, they want it done right. And they yeah. want, they got their protected areas that they want to protect. As and, they should. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They want, they want to hurt the character here. You know, it's beautiful, beautiful country. Yeah. No, that's, that's what I like about the government here. They, they're just very practical. They, yes. They understand the benefits, but they understand the challenges and the damage that can come when things aren't done in the right way. And so they, they do the work to make sure that it's happening right. Yeah. I mean, like the project that we're going to do, I don't know how many years that would be like in California, at least 10, 15. If, 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 if you could if, ever get it through. Right. So, yeah. 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 And uh, it's nicer here. <laughs> So do you plan on moving down here? Is this going to become home or? Well, you know, we'll probably spend more time down here, certainly when we're building this stuff. Um, but I've got my company. I'm still running. So you're still building in Michigan. Okay. Yeah. So we're just doing contract work. Okay. I've done. I have not done any development in Michigan since 08, 09. So once that went through, yeah. I was I was done with that, <laughs> you know. And we're just, we just do contract work. Stick with, stick with your specialty. We and, did, yeah. yeah. Don't get sure. your skis. For sure. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm assuming you'll at least want to be down here for a chunk of the winter. Yes. I uh, hear it gets That's a little a, cold there. It's a good time to do a job. Yeah. Very <laughs> cold there. Very hard to be produ productive in the winter in Michigan. For sure. I can imagine. No, I, I think, I think that part of the reason 
There's a number of reasons we're seeing a bunch of Canadians moving down here. Probably the largest driver is just the government up there and the crazy things that's happening. But but the other thing is the weather. They come down here and, you know, it's like heaven. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. So it's a big draw, big appeal. Um, you know, excited about getting started on something down here. So how long till you break ground on, on this project? We're we're probably going to be spring summer next year. Okay. We kind of bumped up the number of uh, the density in the units we're getting, and so we went to kind of another. So how, level. how big of a project is it? Just this is going to be. So originally it was going to be 128 units, and now it's about 275. Okay, so that's so, taking so a very little more time. Yeah, yeah, it's on what would be uh, uh, 30 uh, 30 yeah. acres. You know. Mansana's down here, right? But thirty. And these acres these projects here. that are coming in, you know, there's there's a number of them like that. You know, tens of millions of dollars that, you know, are putting people to work in construction. All the businesses that form, you know, because of that. And so it's people are excited here. People yeah. feel like things are getting better. Um, the only real complaint you hear from from a lot of people now is they can't find enough employees because. Yeah. Everybody's working now, which historically was never the case here. So right. love right. love seeing that happen, especially when it's done in a way that protects the the character and and you know works with the 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 local communities to make sure that it just doesn't get plowed over. Yeah, you know, it's it a beautiful place. It. They're gonna that's yeah. the value. You don't want to ruin it. <laughs> they don't want to ruin it. Yes. So you know, you can do both. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So tell people. I don't know if there's a way for them to find the Airbnbs that you guys have. Is there like they're searching? So this one is on air. The one we just got is on Airbnb uh -huh. right now. That's what they were doing with it. So we're, I think we're keeping that in place. Okay. So if they go to Chalpa Beach. Chalpa, that's with an S-H. S-H-A-L-P-A, -A -A, yeah. yep. They can find okay. that. We're doing some upgrades on the Saramar house. Okay. So we got that uh, pulled off right now. But that's going to be ready by the time the conference starts. So, so one thing I really want to do is to see a Bitcoin platform, like an Airbnb. We, we have an Air Bitcoin and B uh, well, know, platform that 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 allows people to pay for their rentals in in Bitcoin, and also it connects Bitcoin owners with. Bitcoin renters and builds that community aspect. Yeah, we're moving towards that. And, you know, this is uh, it's Nakamoto Surf House is the name of the uh -huh. place. So it, you know, but I'm talking about a bigger platform. I would love to see somebody in the Bitcoin space basically just knock off Airbnb, but ah. everything's Bitcoin. So you don't have to worry about any of the banking or credit card fees or any of those things. You do like a platform uh -huh. that you know, there's some type of uh, fee that gets paid for placing your house there, but it's it's connecting the Bitcoin community. It's connecting the circular Bitcoin economy. I've heard that there is something out there that is either in play right now or coming soon to do just what you're talking about. Well, let let me know if you have I, I know. on that because I haven't followed we would love to it. like support that because I, those are the type of things that really drive the Bitcoin circular economy. Mm -hmm. You have Bitcoiners coming down here, they want to spend in Bitcoin, but you can't do that on Airbnb right now. And right. So, I mean, you can, you can contact the owner directly and, you know, Airbnb tries to stop you and some people are able to, you know, find a way to pay kind of offline. But it would be great to have just a platform that you go to. You know that you're supporting Bitcoiners and, you know, you build those relationships. I, when I heard that there was something like that out there, I, I was thinking that that's what I would do with Lake Satoshi. Because I've got, you saw that cabin that uh -huh. we had built. We built it up at my shop and then we took it out back and we set it out there on the lake. And I, I wasn't really too fired up about renting them out right now. But I thought, I put it out there to the Bitcoin community. That's that's almost a good filter right there. You know what kind of people you're going to get. Yeah. You know? So I'm definitely looking at doing that at Lake Satoshi. No, because you get, you're going to get people that generally are going to treat your property yes. better, who, yes. who understand the, yes. the value that, that's there. And so it's a way to qualify the people that you have renting. That's a way to keep... The, the banking apparatus out of it from taking their fees. It's a way of, you know, 
nobody knows what you're doing, but right. that you and your, you know, Bitcoin wallet. So, yeah. Uh, yeah so that's so somebody out there. Somebody needs to. I think that's it. To it, do that. I, I think that's out there. Well, we'll just, well, ha I haven't seen the site yet, but I've been told about it. Okay. So. so when can people buy tickets for next year's uh, Lake Satoshi event? It'll be, we'll probably put something on our website on lakesatoshi.com. Okay. And they'll be able to buy off that right there. But so it's August 10th. Is the, August 10th. Yep. So is it just one day? I was under the impression it was multiple it's gonna be, days. It, so. it, it, well, the, the, uh, the event, the conference will be on August 10th. Okay. It will be like we, I think we advertise it like the August 11th to the 13th this last summer. Okay. So it's so like a three day, we'll this, three we, night event. It or, will be. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And you can come camp, you know, you don't have to pay to camp. It's all. Come do some fishing. Come do some fishing. Yep. We got yeah. walleye, we got bluegill, we got bass. Nice. It's good fishing. No, I'm, I'm definitely going to be there. Yeah. Uh, so we got that. They, they have, you have the, the Bitcoin 101 that, that down the line, people will be able to store their, their multi-sig keys at. Yes. And then, and you have the, the developments here that will, will keep people updated. Right. Yes, absolutely. Where else can people follow you or find out about what you got going on? They can go to our website, bitcoin101.io. Okay. And at Lake Satoshi on Twitter. And that's And that's that's where like when you start developing these properties, you'll you'll be putting it out in in those Yes. Okay. Yep. Oh, we'll certainly put them on there. Yeah. We'll be advertising down here too, but yeah, it will definitely be. We've got uh, Nakamoto House on our uh, Bitcoin 101 site. Okay. Yeah, Sweet. so they can go there and, and and book that probably after the middle of November. Sweet. Well, I appreciate uh, you uh, making some time before I know you're leaving tomorrow. So Yeah, I'm uh, leaving in a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for uh, getting in here. And yeah. I'm excited to, uh, I'm a little worried that your event next year is going to have like a thousand <laughs> people show up. So I well, hope you're ready for it. Yeah. It'll be like Woodstock where they, you have the, you know, they just push the gates over. We, and yeah, they, uh, we talked about in. that. You know, I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to see that. But uh, <laughs> hey, we, we love the people coming in. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's all about education. All right. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm sure people will be respectful. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. So we will, we will see you then in August then. All right. All right. Thanks Thank for having me, Mike. Thank you.